everybody, welcome to Kilmer's Irish Pub. Time for another movie review. Tech's movie, The Fallout. I am I'm a little excited about this. This I had in my list for a while. Not sure why. It's about a high schooler who ended up dealing with some sort of tragedy. The fallout of um we don't know what in the wake of a school tragedy. So uh kind of scary there. Um but uh you know she has to deal with her family and friends and you know um how everything's altered forever. Here's the, it's 6.9 on IMDb, but only 572 people have rated it so far. Um, uh, Jenna Ortega is in it. She was in You, um, John Ortiz, Julie Brown, uh, Shailene Woodley is in it. You know, so there's some names in it. Um, and here's the thing, I was like waiting for it to come out, and I knew it was like a January release kind of thing, and here, it's on HBO Max on a Thursday. On a, not even on a Friday, on a Thursday. So that I'm kind of excited about that. Kind of wanted to see the film. And uh, HBO Max is going to give it to me on a thirsty Thursday. So speaking of thirsty Thursday, let's see. All right, I'm going to get into it, find out what it's about, give you a better idea. Let you know what I think. Stick around. I'm excited. Hey everybody, I want to do a quick check in here. We're watching The Fallout. We're at the 43 minute 28 second mark. A um, little under halfway. I guess I could have let it go a little bit more, but felt natural to pause it here and speak to you all. Um, so, IMDb tells us there's a tragedy at school. I mean, I don't want to spoil anything, but you can probably imagine uh, what the tragedy at school is, right? So, um, and Veda, who is um, Jenna Ortega, um, is our main character. And her, her mom is uh, the girl from Modern Family, and um, um, her dad is, is it Jorge Ortega? I forget what his name is, but whatever. She's got a little sister. Anyway, I, I'm going sideways. Who cares, right? You know, the people I said, they're her parents. Um, and she's got a little sister. And it's interesting to me. I have two little girls. Now, they're not this age, but they are the same. They're just like a few years forward because my daughter is going to go into this stage, the high school stage, and have a little sister who's in grade school. She is already in high school. She's got a little sister who's in grade school. So there's this thing that happens at school, of course, and so it changes the way she interacts um, with her family, of course. Um, so obviously she's you know, a survivor or she wouldn't be in the movie. So. Um, from whatever happened at the uh, um, school tragedy. And, um, you know, so it changes the way she interacts, but it also changes her, in a sense, with, you know, who... F with people that she didn't realize that she could get close to. So, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, it happens right in the beginning, but anyway, she becomes friends with a, a girl that she wasn't friends with before because of this. They were caught in a, si a similar situation and they've kind of created this bond between each other. The girl uh, is rich. She's like, I thought this is interesting, like an influencer on, on Instagram. It's like all these California kids are influencers on Instagram, on movies, you know what I mean? But, but anyway, so she's, <clears throat> and her parents, which I think are two dads, travel a lot, so she's really home alone. Long story short, she has created a bond with her um, and so we're watching the relationship between them two grow. She also has a best friend um, um, who is a guy, and he's kind of become an activist over all of this. Now, she's not hanging out with him so much, um, but she's following what he's doing. I know I'm saying a lot there, but uh, I think that, you know, so, and it's, I'll say this, in the beginning as I'm watching her, again, she, you know, how kids dress today, whatever. As, you know, a parent, you might have some opinions, and I'm not judging anybody else's kids or anybody else's opinions, but, you know, she's very sloppily dressed. I don't even know if sloppily is a word, so you can have an opinion about me, about my use of vocabulary. But I'm thinking that as I'm watching it, it's like, you know, like she's, she's making a peanut butter and jelly, getting her sleeves in it and stuff like that. It's like, come on, you know, like that's me as a parent, probably an unhip parent, so I apologize. But that's my judgment call, 
until there's a point where literally I've gotten the chills two or three times. And like that's all like I was thinking about that and now that's all gone, you know, after you get the chills. I two times at least I got the chills. So um yeah. It's it's crazy. Like how much it changes your POV, your point of view. I saw that on TikTok. So um, <laughs> anyway, that's where we are. I'm, I'm laying out a lot of info for you, but uh, it's it's interesting. At first, I wasn't sure how much I liked it, to be honest with you. I didn't like the way she, our main character, I didn't like the way, obviously, she dressed. I didn't like the way she acted. I didn't like the things she talked about. Um, so, but I also felt very judgmental until more of the movie happened. So right now, not as judgmental as I was before and really interested. So there you go. All right. I ramble on. That was one of the longest ever check-ins ever. Hopefully I don't have to check in again, but if anything interesting happens, I will. Um, if not, I'll see you at the end and give you my final thoughts. Wait, I do have something. Oh, I forget what it is. So this also reminds me of a film that, uh, oh, I watched, um, I Am Not Ashamed. So if you haven't seen that, and if I can remember to do it, I'll put a link up here. I've done a review to that. I gave that one an 8. Very similar. That one's a faith-based film. This one is not faith-based. Um, but that one was a really good one. That immediately came to mind. So in the end of this, if you enjoy this film, if you're entertained, enjoy seems like a bad word um, in this case. But if you're entertained by this film and you found it interesting and want to watch more films like it, I am not ashamed. So there you go. I'm dropping that now. But still stick with me for the end. Alright, I'm rambling. I'll be back in a bit. Hey everybody. We're at the credits of The Fallout. Um, you know, the ending just happened and I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest with you. Sorry, I think I have an eyelash in my eye. I'm sure you guys can't see it, but I can see it. It's annoying me. Sorry. Um, anyway, um, okay, ready, <laughs> action. No, um, you know, I'm watching it and I'm like, oh man, I don't know what I think about the film altogether. I wasn't really even thinking until, you know, I was just soaking it in, letting it happen. Um, wasn't thinking about the movie review until the ending happened. I didn't realize it was going to end, and I was like, oh, okay. So then, as I'm turning on the camera, I sat down. I know I'm walking you through all of this, but I sat down and I thought, um, you know, maybe this isn't my demographic. Not that I didn't like the film, but is it in my demographic? And I thought, well, it wouldn't be something for my kids, I don't think, to watch. I don't feel I would let either of my daughters watched them. Now, like I said, one's in 8th grade, the other one's in 4th grade. Shailene Woodley just coming. Let me side. I forgot about that. So she is the therapist um, that Jenna Ortega's um, character meets with. Not that that's terribly important, but I found it very interesting because I used to watch Shailene Woodley's movies, you know, the Divir Diversion series and everything else she's been in. And she was like kind of in the Jenna Ortega roles. You know, like she would, not that she ever had a movie where she met with a therapist, but she was in the, that kind of character, and now here she is as the therapist for a 16-year-old girl. I just found that very interesting. Um, you know, do with that with what you want, but I thought that was, uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, back to demographics, and I was like, okay, is it? You know, is this demographic for my kids? I, you know, and because this is what the movie's about. 16-year-olds and probably a 14 to 13-year-old, which my daughters will become, not yet. Um, maybe for them when they become that age, but not now, I don't think. But then I, as I actually reached my seat, I thought, you know what? I think this movie is targeted, really, at me. You know, at my demographic at, at, as a parent. You know, I think it speaks to the fact that, uh, you know, you, you maybe don't know your kids as well as you think you do, uh, especially when they go through a tragedy like this and, and um, you know, all that kind of thing. Not that the parents in this one did a bad job, but, um, you know what I mean, like, or, or pay more close attention. Again, not that the parents did anything wrong, but, 
you know, maybe this dem maybe the movie demographic was more geared towards me than I actually thought. So, but I don't know why I went all into that. But uh, <laughs> how do I feel about the film? Uh, you know what? I think the beginning of it was was really interesting and had me drawn in. Um, but then I felt like the second half, even though it's only an hour and thirty minutes long, it felt slower and mundane, if you will. Um, you know, they've established everything, and they're now just uh, keeping it going, I felt like. Um, you know, you want to get to that next interesting piece of the movie. And I felt there was a lull between, you know, the beginning and, and, and uh, you know, when, when, you know, she makes that friend and all that stuff is all developed. And there's a little bit of side stuff as well. But it really slows down, I think, since, you know, for about the last half hour at least, maybe 36 minutes, um, at least I feel. And so, huh, Tyler Hilton wrote one of the songs, Gone. That's pretty cool. Tyler Hilton is from One Tree Hill. And, uh, you know, anyway, um, sings on, on a lot of songs. But uh, where was I going? Anyway, so there you go. I, I think I've shared really more information than you probably ever wanted. So again, remember the movie I recommended before. Uh, hopefully I'll have it tagged. i got to remember to do that tomorrow. Because uh, uh, if, you, if you're interested in this, you'll be interested in that one, at least I think. Um, very interesting movie. Uh, I was on a 7, to be honest with you, when I first started watching it. I was at a solid 7, and I dipped a little bit towards a 6. The lull got me, I think, and then the ending, which... I'm not sure how I feel about the ending. It was different than my emotions leading into it. I know, that's hard to swallow. But uh, that's what I got for you. Six teetering on a seven. I don't know. But uh, HBO Max, man. Awesome. You know, that's pushing some of the scores up there for me when you can turn this on in the luxury of your own home if you are a subscriber. And it's a Thursday. And so, there you go. Hopefully I was somewhat helpful. I'm sure this review is way too long for anybody to watch it. But if you didn't, you stuck with me. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thanks for tuning in. Kimmel's Irish Pub.